Quack! That was pre seven. <laughs> welcome in, Fox Fires. How's it going? Welcome, welcome. What happened to our music? Oh, I think it just ended right when I started, is all. <laughs> hello, Marina. Hello, Wizzy. Hello, Pepe. Hello, Blaze. Hello, Seven. Hello, Fox. Hello, Puffin. Chance. Hello. And Night. Hello, hello. Welcome in. Seppim, hi, hi. <laughs> Almost missed you in there. <laughs> With the boba. You got some boba. How's everybody doing? We uh we got some art day today, more practice time. And I figured maybe we'll do things a little bit different this week. Um for learning. Hello. Um I figured we will start. Oh, it's over the 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 chat is over top. Hold on. I can fix that. Um, I figure we'll do it a little bit differently because um, well, there it goes. Um, we'll do things a little differently because there's only one class for hands on um, the Colossal course. And I just think hands are so important um for art that i'd really like to take the time and just keep practicing and keep studying um so I, I think we should do another look at hands again this week um after doing the first study i did find um mikey mega mega had a one a video for hands on um their video um and i found it really really helpful so wait chinese new year fox that's this one that's the one I'm wearing, Seven. Wait, do you want the dragon version? This one? You want the green one? Or red? Blue? Green? Whatever color it is. <laughs> the green one? Okay. <laughs> the blue-green? Um... 
hands. They're very important. They're very, very important. So I don't know. I think we should take an extra day just for practicing um, the hands and stuff like that because hands are very complicated. And yeah, you need practice. <laughs> I need practice. <laughs> Does more practice save critiques? Well, I could definitely, I, if you still want me to give you um, any critiques, I can still uh, give them. Because, um, I mean, it's just extra help for you to continue practicing. So, I can definitely still give them. Um, but what I figured what we'll do is uh, maybe I'll re-watch and play this uh, Mikey Mega Mega tutorial on hands again. Um, so we'll kind of do like reverse order um, for what we would normally would do. Normally we would um, do like review last week, have critique, and then in the middle or at the end have the new section. Figure today what we'll do is we'll watch the hand tutorials some more. Then I could still do like the critiques in the middle if anybody wants some. Uh, and then I'll just be doing uh, hand practice at the end. So we'll just kind of do like a, a reverse order of um, the study, essentially, because we're just kind of continuing on from last time. So uh, yeah, it'll just be like a part two. I just started drawing and it's blah, <laughs> blah. I mean, I don't know if that ever ends. <laughs> The study side, at least, it's always like bleh. But then you draw something you're really proud of, and then you're like, yay, I did the thing. So it, it, it balances out, right? Dodging the Pepe. Dodge the Pepe. How's your day? Sleep getting better? I still feel so tired. I don't know why. I don't know why. I feel like I'm like, am I getting COVID again? The, the sleepiness feels like uh, the COVID, but I'm not actually sick at all. But I feel that way. Um, where'd my pen go? There it is. But today I made um, the Stardew Valley blueberry tarts. I remade some because they were so good last time. So I remade some today um, because a family member gave me 10 pounds of blueberries. 10 pounds of blueberries. <laughs> That's a heck of a lot of blueberries. Um, so yeah, I made a giant blueberry tart um, for them. And then I made some more mini ones for uh, myself and they're in the fridge right now and I really want one. It's a lot of blueberries. <laughs> I used up two tenths. What was that? One fifth. I, I used one fifth of the blueberries so far. I could make a lot more tarts and I might. I might just make a few more tarts, I don't know. Cause I was like, I can make some up and then freeze them is what I was kind of thinking. <laughs> Too many blueberries. But the tarts are so good. They just take a long time to make. They're very, they're very labor intense, but it tastes so good. It's a lot less labor intense for the, um, the big tart pan. Um, rather than the mini ones, but I like the mini ones because I can kind of like, they're kind of single portioned, you know? You don't have to cut the tart at all. Because I feel like cutting the tart, you know, it like breaks and it's not like perfect and stuff, but the mini ones, they, they, they're they good. <laughs> single portion. Um, oh, and then um, I can show kind of, I guess, what I did um, for last, for study. So these are my study sheets. Here, let me uh, let me just uh, hide the the picture in picture for a second, so you guys can see. Um, so this I did on Wednesday, maybe. I think those were some of my practices for Wednesday. Yeah, because I think it was the day after um, we did the hand lesson. Um, because I found that uh. The ones that I did up here were kind of stiff looking, you know? I wasn't like super happy with them. And I was like, you know what, let's see if I can find any other hand tutorials out there to um, help build upon like some of the stuff that um, Isham did in their course. 
Um, and then that's when I found Mikey McMega, and I've always really liked um, their tutorials. So I was like, oh, I'll do their hand tutorial. I think I did their old hand tutorial. Um, there's, they have one from like seven years ago or something. I think I remember watching that one, um, but this was like a newer one. I mean, it's still like three years old, but newer in quotations, <laughs> seven years. Um, and I was like, oh, I haven't watched this one yet. So I was like, I'll watch this one. So I did that one and then I redid um, this one and this one, trying to keep in mind some of the things that they um, touched on in their video. And I was like, these look better. I think they much, they look much less stiff and stuff. I, I, think, I think they felt nicer and easier for me to construct. Um, so yeah, that was what I did there. So then I was like, okay, I'll practice it again. So here's just some more um, sketches that I did um, a couple days after. I think these ones I did on Friday or Saturday. I think it was Saturday. I think it was Saturday night I did these ones. I don't remember. It was the 29th. Oh, that was yesterday, Sunday. I did these yesterday. My time is evaporating. <laughs> time is evaporating. It's zooming. <laughs> Hello, Bobby Jr. Welcome in. How you doing? Got something good to make them with. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I could always just make up blueberry tarts and then just put them all in the freezer and then just pull them out when I want them, right? That's what I'm thinking. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of some of the practice. I had two days of practice on here. Um, and yeah, I, I think it, I think it helped my hands quite a bit. So I figured today we can um, go through and maybe watch the Mikey Mega Mega video together and sketch together while it's watching, so or while we're watching. So that's why I had it up on the screen. Doing good, just trying to stay cool. Yes, everybody stay hydrated in the warm summer heats. Stay hydrated, keep in the shade. Be sun smart. Sun smart fox fires. Wear your hats, wear your sunglasses, sunscreen, all those good things. All right. Um, I don't think they have music playing for their tutorials ever. So I think music in the background is probably fine. Shop files and reference so here we go. are all available on my Patreon. Well, hello there, guys How and is girls. The my name's volume. Mikey. Welcome back to my room. It's time for another tutorial. I think their volume is probably good compared to mine. Very simple, very basic look at how to draw hands for <gasps> anime, cup manga, of ice, cold water, nice. Any form of illustration, really. We're going to keep the hands. Oh, critiques work at the end, of course. So that we don't give ourselves any time you need them, Blaze. I'm here. Out but just good enough, hopefully, so that you can draw hands for your own characters without them looking wrong. All so right. if you're following along at home, I've just got a few sheets of printer paper to give myself a soft surface to work on. Super cheap disposable I also like pencil um, because Mikey Mega Mega's to videos too and because they do everything by hand. You don't need just to give us a quick idea of So they're not like very quick leaning on guide shape. using so like a... Here, I'm just drawing 2D <laughs> cheat tools <laughs> somewhere here because I knew <laughs> too much so that it shows up nice and clearly for you guys but I just want to talk about the relationship of the fingers to the main mass yeah. of the hand so we need... and I'm imagining this rectangular shape is two almost squares they're still a little bit taller than they are wide sitting on top of taller each other taller than they They're are wide halfway. now this is going to be our area for our finger tubes and this is going to be our area for the main hand paddle. I'm using the Latin terms. Also, there's going to be the thumb flap, but we'll talk about that in just a moment. The main thing I do when I'm drawing hands is firstly, think about the main paddle. So that's still area. what we were talking about. It's going to be we got the two rectangle rectangles shape, just a little tall. bit taller than it is wide. But also, I'm actually going to turn it into a bit of a polygon by going just to the right so hand side. I of middle, liked this. And I'm just going to actually tip. give this a line which goes up. Which here is the like more of a polygon shape. Pentagon. And I'm or a pentagon. Very rough and very kind of heavy with my line work here. So do forgive me. And then come back down here. So I'm putting an uneven triangle 
just over the top of that to just give it a bit of like a that. pentagonal shape. And I can start to imagine that actually maybe we're going to come in a little bit here. Just in actually, my squares might a little be a bit little here, bit. Just shaving off the edges towards the bottom. And in a very similar way, when you line up your fingers close together, they're not perfectly going forward. They're also coming in just a little bit. So I'm going to give myself another guideline that just slightly tapers in, in here and slightly tapers in here. Not too much, but just a little bit. We've talked about this before in our How to Draw Fists uh, video, which is probably linked up on screen right now as well. Taper in. Now, that thumb flap. Basically, what I like to do is with our bottom area down here, I go just below halfway down here and do another triangle, not too deep, but just sweeps off to a point. I think that's kind of like section, what I had with like the one third, right back around roughly. And, and I'm working with a lot of straight lines right now, just to give you guys an idea of a form that I tend to have in my mind when we're doing this. And then later on, I tend to then start to firm things up or start to decide where we've got sharper and smoother curves, but we're gonna get to that. Now, I'm just gonna make sure that this hand is attached to a wrist. So I'm just imagining a wrist shape shooting off to the side. We're gonna cut it off right about there. It's nice just to have a little bit of wrist connected to your hands when you draw them with your practice, just so that you kind of are gonna be able to connect them to arms much more easily when That's you fine. do more full characters later. Wrists are good. And then we're gonna talk about this little flow, this line here. And the reason I've given it Welcome that bunch towards the middle is it's very loosely following the lines of the knuckles. Here's our main swearing finger in the middle there, a pointing finger on the right and so on. But this shape, I'm actually going to really accentuate the depth of that angle when we go to the top. Now, this other rectangle helps me understand very loosely that the longest finger is probably going to reach about this point, roughly. Yeah, so that's the same as like what you were saying before, here, where like the palm is roughly the same size here, as your middle finger. But now I'm really going to go in and sweep down much more firmly with a much so sharper is nah, you're fine. than these areas here. It's all same thing talking right now anyways. Here, right down there. And, and that's that kind of like, um, gives us the overall silhouette I'm pause form, for a second. Even though it's this kind of is similar to like what we were doing before too. Um, with the curving. So you remember we talked about how you make that curve to make the mitten, but I like the, I like using straight lines because I think straight lines are easier than curves um, for a lot of people. And also I find that by doing these straight line blockings, I find that my um, finished product for my hands felt more interesting and less static to like look at and stuff when I started using more of these like rectangle building blocks, which feels like opposite. You feel like the curves would have made it more interesting. Um, but I definitely felt like using this for my building blocks was more helpful for me. So hopefully it's helpful for Just you guys too. At the moment of the hand itself. Now, when it comes to the thumb area, I like to just pop up just about here for the first part of the joint. And again, always reference your own hand if you can. Take loads of photographs of your hand in different positions. Be your own kind yes, of reference. Yes, absolutely. Really I know and I've said that I'm in uh, my last uh, video here, quite a bit. Take pictures of your area. own hands. And then the inside of the thumb, I tend to curve it out a bit concave and then the back end a bit convex. And I make sure that this that finishes. This was the just only part I think the in just gonna come up their proportioning. Sweep out was I think their like thumb this. is a bit too small. A little bit at the end. Cause back. this knuckle here should be in line. So it should come further out. So I'm gonna adjust mine to um, reference that a little bit. So now this is at least a lot more closer to uh, the knuckles because your your thumb knuckle and your, um, or sorry, your, your thumb joint and your uh, finger knuckles should line up. So I think 
they just forgot to mention that probably and uh, made it a little bit smaller. So there we go. Hello, Menes, welcome in. Just for now, just like that. Ah, high five! Here, I'm gonna middle. pause the video for studying. Welcome in! Raiders, how was your stream, Hawkbar? Oh, Shadow the Hedgehog, was it a good stream? Did you have a good time? And Foxfires, be sure to go give some love over to Hawkbar. Good, good. Happy to hear. We're uh, doing a little bit of study time ourselves. Um, we're hopefully trying to improve our hand study. We did a little bit uh, last Tuesday, but. Um, I want more. <laughs> I want more hand progress because hands are very tricky. So we're doing, um, we're looking at Mikey Mega Mega's um, hand tutorial right now because I watched it before and I found it super helpful. So I'm just using it again to kind of reinforce all those good ideas right now. Mm -hmm. Hands are very difficult, super, super difficult. So uh, any extra time working on hands is uh, time well spent. And that's like a lot of things too. Um, even as we go through this course, like, I, like I've like i watched a million hand tutorials, you know, and my hands are only getting better every time I rewatch another video, right? So you know, it, taking the extra day is not gonna, not gonna hurt anything, right? Rewatching another video you've already watched, not gonna hurt anything. It's gonna just give you more of those hours and your hands are only just gonna get better, so. Mm -hmm. There's another thing we can keep an eye on. This area here from our knuckles that goes up to the tips is going to be divided into three sections. Where you oh, I also forgot to say for our raiders. My name is Lily. I think, I, think I forgot that. But this lowest section <laughs> Welcome goes in. almost halfway up the finger. Mm, and then this is something um, that I learned from the video that I forgot. Because um, I was like, I couldn't remember the exact um, dimensions for the fingers. It is, um, so your first knuckle drawn. Oh, I'm drawing with white. That's... That's an issue. There we go. Um, that first knuckle will be halfway up. So we're going to same thing, follow that same curve halfway up. And then the next one after that will be like halfway again. So that was that was something else I learned for this. So that's how you can kind of uh, almost halfway up the main middle gap. I think mine's might be a little bit just put in this very high. light line again. Now we not we aren't actually bending these fingers so we don't need to worry too much but it's always a good idea to know where these joints are loosely going to be and halfway again still with the middle part being a little bit longer than the end part just like so and then now we can divide up for the fingers themselves. So what I like to do is basically just go halfway. Hello, Oz. Welcome in. Area here. I'm in trading, but I'm, I'm lurking. No worries. Enjoy the lurk. These two fingers, but I am for these We're just two. in study mode. So I'm going to go so. halfway, just plus a little bit as well. And if I bring a line that goes relatively straight up here, I liked this tip too. Just like this. I basically split the hand lot. into two groups of two fingers. Because I felt like it sure helped um, if you find like kind of that first two fingers, second two fingers, halfway point, I felt like it was easier to break down and manage and I could see it a little bit better. So I actually really liked this, adding that first line in and splitting it between your middle and pointer finger and then your ring finger and pinky a lot. Bring these lines ever so slightly in as I go up, we can split them again. So let's split off the ring finger from the pinky finger very loosely over here. And now we can split off the swearing finger from the pointing finger very lightly over here. So these are just some very basic construction shapes, but this is giving me a bit of a guideline for the hand overall and helping me understand the relationship of the different bits of these hands. Right oh, across here we've got all of our knuckle joints bar? and so on. But I just want to show you what I like to do <laughs> instead of 
curving over here. It was bothering to show me. these joints or describe this as a bit of a cylinder. I like to kind of use some slightly sharper lines because it forces me to get some energy and angles into the yeah. early on. Whoops. And then I Hit can my decide mic. to bring it back. But yeah, later. it does feel and like it gives more energy. Really just going up in these loose I really areas, have to very lightly agree. And just kind of triangle these off. Just a little bit here, a little bit there. And this just helps guide rather than working in later. cylinders i, I liked the... the things with the hands but it also forces me just to really start to break down these shapes as well this one's a little bit uneven excuse me let me just come back up here and also we're going to get some tips of fingers in so i'm just going to very firmly just put in some relatively hard edges there to get the tip of this finger going and then much further down on this side let's just use that guideline at the top remember this is a guide for us. We can work beyond it or for it if we want to. The That's also a very good point, too. Remember, your guide is a guide. A so you weaker. can, like, it doesn't Let's have to be in. exactly and where it is and stuff. Some relatively firm lines because it's for hesitancy and uncertainty on your lines, which is part of why drawing hands can be a bit of a nightmare and they can look a bit rubbish. So again, I'm just going to start off with a pinky right up here. And this one. I'm gonna sweep this in and really cut in here to make this much thinner and just bring that in. So I've got my guideline here, but I've decided to come all the way in on that side. And also you'll notice here that there's almost a little bit of webbing between your fingers. The underside of your hand is nice and flat and clear, but just here you can see that it actually all reaches back. And what I just like to do to help keep that in mind is I just describe the fingers as going up the surface curve here, just like so, over to the back of the hand. And that kind of indicates where we've got our knuckle joints and then everything is in terms of the bone structure leading back in towards the wrist. But there we've got a very basic idea of how I break down some hand shapes. And what we're gonna do now is actually use that to have some very common hand shapes, especially when you're drawing your own characters and they're just standing there. Very common hands that we can start to stick on the arms for poses you probably already have. So now this Ain't time without the guidelines, we're tall. gonna start to use some of these building blocks again. I'm gonna have a hand which is just like this, laid out and open. I'm just getting a bloody good look at mine right now. And then I'm going to map that out roughly down here. So let's say that we- My hand might be a little fat, that's okay. <laughs> the hand about here. I like to start from where it meets into the arm. So I'm just gonna make an arm disappear somewhere off there. And again, I'm gonna be as quick as possible, um, which means it's probably gonna be a bit rough, but this is just to keep the time of the video down for you guys to follow along at home. And then again, I'm just gonna get right. almost filling in a square space, but just Next to touch one. Here's our main central paddle of the hand before we go into the tube. I roll hand stream. Again, They're not my hands though. We're, um, we're watching this video by uh, Mikey Mega Mega. They have a really good tutorial and I found that it helped um, me draw better hands. So I was like kind of wanting to show it to you guys. Um, and I think they made some excellent points um, about like the finger lengths and stuff that I forgot to uh, mention in the last hand video. So. Um, that's why we're just kind of going through again and watching uh, their tutorial. Doing some uh, some study times, you know. And also welcome in Captain Coin. Don't need to know all the technical terms because I certainly don't. So then I'm just going to bring it up a little bit here, down a little bit here towards the smaller fingers. And then I'm falling we're behind. map that thumb shape. So I'm falling behind. I'm going to go more than halfway up this edge we're to around about that. here and about halfway into here and give us a nice generous bit of thumb muscle just inside of there. And we've got all sorts of lines and wrinkles and lifelines of bits inside the palm of our hand. When you're doing even basic hands, it's good to get maybe this line in to a certain degree, maybe even this one as well just to show we're looking at the inside part of the hand. But then again, I'm just going to sweep out the triangle to around about here. That's gonna be our paddle area, just like so. And then I can come up a little bit with the thumb, relatively nice and thick to around about there. And again, I'm gonna sweep out for the back side of the thumb over where the nail is and curve a lot more generously back in for the inside end of the thumb. And then if I'm going to have the fingers splayed, I still know that this distance is going to be vaguely 
the limit of our lead finger distance around about here. And I'm just going to follow this kind of action, but now really splay it out from what we've already got going on in the hand. So I might have the pointing finger coming up to about here. Then we've got the swearing finger in the middle over there, coming out, following this plane down to the other finger, and then right down to the little finger, might just be coming somewhere further in here. And then I'm gonna start to join them up again. Now, firstly, some very simple guiding tube lines. One here, just up Lovely. there, and then back to around back here. I was known my forte anyways. Always buy those yeah. that have a mask. Uh, the have the patience one. for it. It definitely Sweeping does take a lot of patience. Just like so. Then a gap again as we go over to this guy. Sweep over here. Follow that way in, tapering ever so slightly. And then a small gap again as we get to our little finger around about there. And now I'm just going to use this kind of similar shape feeling to help work my way up each of these fingers. I'm going to just sweep up here almost halfway and just start to get this little kind of point in to show here's a bit of surface area here's a bit of separation in the structure of each one and each time i'm sectioning this off so that each finger is a little bit shorter Gosh. or each finger section is a bit shorter so than the one before it and then here going almost halfway up sweeping out that's good generous portion i need to i need again. to force myself I'm to be again. faster and, and less um particular I'm using about certain shapes straight lines when i say curve things off to keep that energy for the moment as i describe this hand doing the same up this finger as well one two good practice for me and three and i do actually tend to keep things very sketchy and loose like this when i'm doing hands because i do struggle with them and i find it easier to work then on top a little bit later but keeping this looser energy and keeping yourself loosened up when you're trying to get these forms is going to be massively helpful as well don't be too I agree. tight this is very useful to guide but you're going to want to just really observe and sketch and observe and sketch and then let's do the little finger one it's a little, little fat bit flatter here two or a little skinny here we go got to fatten so them up point and then three our little finger off there but i'm not going to make these fingers appear to roll over slow the is top smooth, smooth is fast. The hand, like we've got the knuckle area here because we're looking <gasps> when did you go to the next edge. hand the only other line would be another line that starts from about the second finger here and also just kind of sweeps across the palm but i would make that the lightest line out of all three if i'm trying to describe what's going on on the inside but i would also just bring the muscle of that thumb just down in and create a little bit of a divot of a shape here as well and let the hand come on the outside now of this guide. We've got a bit more mass, it usually sweeps up around about there like so. So next up, let's have a look at a hand, maybe side on in a bit of a spear technique because this also has thickness. So let's have a wrist that comes maybe off of here. Oh boy. I'm gonna give myself a through line for just hopefully guiding the arm all the way down to the point of the fingers, something like so. <laughs> And then let's make part of this a wrist round about here. I'm going to be as rough as ever. So let's stop here. Just like so. This is me cutting off the arm at the end. And then again, okay, if I'm going to have this part wrist. sweeping all the way down to around about here, let's say, and that's going to be the main mass of the side of the palm of the hand. That distance, again, is going to help me dictate the fingers Finger are probably distance. going to work all the way over to there. Now, so now we need that the fingers, to there, which is about there. I'm actually just going to drop the line down a little bit before I then sweep it along. And again, must apologize for being so rough. Let's go down here, sweep along there. And then I'm just going to now go one, two, three. And I'm using these angled lines to really give the feeling of these digits having these sections and going into a point. So here's our knuckle area just over here. And then we've got loads of other stuff going on as well because we've got the thumb, which is going to be around about here. This is halfway down the hand area, just past halfway point, just like we've got here. Did I do and that right? <laughs> Did I miss something? Working up and then back around down to where the wrist actually meets in. So I would actually describe this all as a lot of kind of curving muscular shapes, but again, I'm just sweeping them with some firmer 
um, sharper lines firstly, just to really kind of accentuate a lot of this. And then we've got the thumb, the first area of the joint goes to about here, relatively nice and thick. And then the tip of the thumb, the last part goes right up into the first section of our finger around about here, just like so. And then you can imagine that, you know, the nail would be somewhere around about here if we're going to start putting them in. But let's keep it as simple as possible for now. Then we've probably got some wrist joint area here. I'm probably going to bring that wrist closer to this size. Coming off there. I'm just going to erase this line there because it's a little too thick. But there we've got a little bit of a side on look as well. So when you've got your characters standing up and the hands just resting down by their side, it's going to look a bit like this this way but it's going to be a lot more relaxed so let's take a look at this we've got my fingers look a little weird <laughs> here. so again i'm just gonna come down here a little bit for the arm leading into the wrist let's cut it off around about here all right next I'm trying one. to work out how i'm going to fit all of our hands into the uh, page uh, space as well and then i'm going to do a similar thing that i did here starting over here um, I'm going to actually go out <laughs> Welcome in, bit, because when the hand's not spear, um, making a spear shape really locked and rigid, it's a bit more relaxed. It's going to curve around a little bit. So I'm just going to let this sweep out a bit more to something like this. And then Wait, what part are we on? Is this the palm? here. And then this distance again is going to be round yeah. out to where the fingers start. Oh, curl. okay. We're doing like a hand to the a side. So fingers will curve. And I'm going to just imagine the thumb area as well. So let's go just past halfway once more. Very similar to this. We've got a load of mass for the thumb here, but it's going to be a bit more yeah, open out and natural. So this kind of area that's projecting out towards us for the thumb is going to come much further out here before it starts to just come down here. Then let's sweep that back in there. And we're going to have this area here, this kind of curving shape gap there. I know it's not quite in focus which is going to just be this line here, just sweeping in, showing a gap between the thumb and the fingers. And then we can come down now with that thumb joint and just bring that nice and gently in, maybe a little bit of a firmer line on this edge. I'm not gonna go full concave, because it's a relatively side on thumb, but I'll still take maybe a bit of an opportunity to bring the curve in on the inside like edge, just like so. And then as we work down the fingers, I'm actually going to imagine tracking from the back, as in the top edge of the fingers is usually an area. Yeah, or a this side is the hand video that I've been referencing. I really like the way that uh, he teaches the it. The inside edge of the fingers is where I've got so, all these uh, where I start to think of these as curves. So I'm still going to just. I wanted to show it to everybody. Relatively down here, but just almost halfway. Then another straight line joint in about there. And then let's start to curve that in for the oh, finger. Got to curve and then fingers. Again, I'm going to use these kind of trapezoid shapes to just bring these sections like back. Like that? Which basically means let's have a line that comes here. And I'm just going to go one. Mine might be a little bring long. Bring that line in at an angle. Two. Start to section that off. And three. I'll let's make it a little shorter the then. tip of the finger. Just like so. And maybe even then the second finger is going to go just past there we'll see just a tiny little bit of the same situation just happening up on the inside of the hand there and we've got the third finger doing another thing again barely Hold on. separated out and then maybe the pinky's just going to be in a little bit more so i'm going to go a bit further up here shrinking mine my way back up this time just to go one two three and then just show the inside edge of the hand coming up in there oh god well. in fact, how, do, how does he suddenly have five edge, fingers <laughs> total a bit more further, <laughs> suddenly the suddenly five fingers <laughs> um okay well i'm just gonna do the rest of my fingers one two
Something like that. Something like that? I think? I think? <laughs> Hello, good marriage. Welcome in. I think? I hope. This hand right. is not just flat, I'm caught back up. It's relatively convex. It's working round as the hand is fairly casually just hanging down. And that just allows me now to come back up to this thumb line where I'm using these hard angles. I'm just going to bring that off into a bit more of a curve. Imagine how it just meets the joint of the wrist area up here. And then we've got a hanging hand. And again, we will pop over this and start to redo these shapes in just a moment. Yeah, and then they're just now, rough right now. You know, it's about a bit more dynamic. Let's have a quick, hand that's coming speedy. out towards us, still using these particular pentagonal base shapes. So if we've got a hand low, that's reaching towards us, low effort I'm sketches start right now. Roughly at the bottom again. Roundabout We're just doing them real quick. And I'm still Hello, Ham. Welcome in. Gone feeling, but I'm squeezing it down because of a force. Oh, we're going to do a cone cone hand. We can. Towards us. So we, can, we can do a cone cone hand today. Along this edge, just like so. Out a little bit here. I hope right, I'm giving myself what are we doing? space. And then much further oh, down. Oh, I think we're doing a hand coming here. out Let's sweep of the that screen. In. It's coming towards us, so it's looking a lot wider across this top area. Like forced perspective base, hand just to really kind of give us that feeling of kind of depth and reach and the first thing i'm going to do is get that thumb muscular area back in so, so yeah we got that pentagon the halfway point working my way around even though it's much more shallow towards the middle just like so using some relatively straight lines even though i'm describing a lot of muscular natural curves just to get these shapes nicely defined in and this thumb is going to be reaching out and around the actual muscular area is probably going right down and around here. And then the rest of the hand is up on this side. And then we've got our kind of life line and bit that's going down and around there. Using this to describe a slightly concave feeling inside the hand itself. And then I can just start to think right. Our thumb is going to be going right out over in this direction. And then we're going to have uh, the lead finger probably reaching right up here not too tall because it's foreshortened towards us and again i'm thinking about this line and i'm trying to give myself a very loose idea of where these fingers might travel out and around so i'm gonna sweep round here and i'm gonna just come in relatively shallow and all the way down here i'm imagining that even if the hand is splayed out there's an entire web of material between it and just trying to think about where that space is going to be occupied and just use that as a bit of a guide again. So, I'm going to be thinking once more about some very similar tubes. Because we're looking down over this cylindrical shape, we're I think gonna see this is the hard part because, like, coming in you kind of have to break to what you've been told do, about, like, oh, here, the finger is again, the same with the guide. palm a little bit Another because with a bit of, gap of the foreshortening. The splayed apart around about here, which I'm going to take up to this point, like so. Another one coming in a bit more directly towards us now, around about here. So this is going to be a lot shorter, just like so. And then I'm going to have the little finger drop right down, almost to the same level as the thumb, in fact. So let's go right in. Now I've got this guide, but I'm choosing to bring this in a lot further down here. And then with the thumb, I'm still thinking, right, the first part of that joint is coming out around about there. And then the second part, we're going to see the most of something like so, reaching out like this. And now I'm going to come back up and just start to use those kind of angular shapes to separate things off. But this time, I'm going to start with the tips of the fingers because they're much closer towards us and then work my way back towards the center of the hand. Much like if you want to draw somebody who's punching right towards a camera or kicking towards you, the viewer, you start off with the nearest part and work that limb back towards like the that. main body and torso. Same with Doesn't the finger. Doesn't look too bad. closest bit placed and then map it backwards. So let's get um, this thumb shape in. One, two, three. This should be some nice curves, but I'm still trying to think angular so that I can do this. Let's bring this back with a nice point. 
Let's do the same for the next part of the thumb. Just like so. Really give that some hard edge shape, just so that I can get my head around all of these forms. And I'm going to... Yeah, I really like this um, use of the here. triangle. Like, I just find that it gives it such more, like, more this side, interesting curved part shapes to look at. And here. it kind of feels like so gesture drawing in the sense that it just makes it look here. better. And now it's the end finger, which is going to be taking up a large amount of space, just like so. Because it's foreshortened towards us, the other sections are going to be diminishing with a bit of a hooking action there. And another one there as it meets into the hand. Just like so. Straighter lines on this side. More curves there. And then we've got this area across the palm. And then similar thing here. Let's have this coming down on this Kinda side. Kind of like drawing like gauntlets too. <laughs> really nice and foreshortened. So I'm just really turning this into a shape that's stacking straight down there. And then we're getting relatively wide as well with this kind of feeling of that foreshortening going down to the hand just like this and just like that get that perspective really kicking off and again that's really kind of squeezing that curve all the way around there this finger actually this firmer edge is going to come on this side now because this one's reaching a bit more out but it's right towards us so i'm really just going to fill most of this space with the tip of this finger coming out here and then a large part of the remainder is the second section and then where it just meets into the hand that final part there and then for the final part of the finger this one i'm just going to keep this a little bit longer because this one's coming out at a bit more of an angle for the pinky bringing it back again with just these lines which give that feeling of a three-dimensional surface that's going away from us and that's kind of going to meet into the hand but it's also folding down so it kind of just comes in around about there and then we've got the front part of the palm. I'm just mapping that up and into each section there. And then the rest of the back of the hand up here, just showing that there's that thickness to the hand itself. And then just coming back down here, and I'm just going to give the hand a bit of muscle on the back side, as well as the part of the thumb that's reaching up here, like so. Bring that line a little bit firmer as it comes back up and in there. But there we go already. We've basically got this vague hand shape that's already kind of reaching forward towards us as well. We've got our lifeline kind of squeezed in there. We can get the other bit just traveling in very lightly in here as well, if you'd like it to. And we could use all sorts of techniques like shading and so on to really give it that feeling of pushing forward. So I've given us just enough space, I've worked this out, um, to have Perfect. one more hand going. And again, I'm trying to think of some very common hand shapes for you guys to start off with. And another one is that if you're drawing a lot of um, uh, luxurious anime ladies, um, you might want to get the hand in shot. But luxurious might just be a waist up shot, the anime ladies area. So a good one is to have the hand reaching all back about the luxury. and touching the collarbone, touching the top of the boob, touching the cheek. This whole kind of oh my i do declare kind of hand that just comes back in repose so let's take a look at one of those um let's go here where i'm starting again with the wrist we're always growing out our hands unless we're doing something extreme like this from the wrist outwards so let's i really like here. this uh and just out hand arm off like i'm like about here that would be normally like so hard just for like me to figure this. out how to draw just breaking it down like that and it makes then, it so now simple now i'm just gonna have this hand going off in this direction and again i'm still doing the same thing even though we're a little bit collapsed and looking a little bit over to the side i'm still thinking of this uh, slight pentagonal shape let's say it does that before it comes all the way back down here we're looking a little bit side on it's gonna have some thickness but i'm not gonna stress too much when we end up doing these organic shapes it's for shading and other things that really tends to define that in just a bit. But I am going to tuck this back in just over the shape of the wrist a little bit as the arm comes down there. And again, just think about some lengths of things. This distance is going to be vaguely this distance. And I'm just dropping from the pearl clutching hand, if you will, indeed. Where that's going to Hello, be. Mama Bob. Welcome in. I'm just in. thinking about that web out of fingers again. So we're going to have maybe do the little finger just going off to about there just again turning it into another flipper for the moment a big paddle 
uh, the smaller finger trailing off to around about there and what you often get in a lot of anime hand poses and so on and it just looks very nice generally is the middle two fingers to be together with the first and little finger separated out it gives the hand a kind of relaxed natural feeling and keeps it just a bit more of an interesting series of shapes compared to four splayed out fingers now in this instance the thumb is on the other side it's lost behind everything that we're already drawing so great we don't have to worry about that let's get those fingers in i'm going to start off with what we're probably not going to see <laughs> don't have to draw a thumb Woohoo! <laughs> and then work my way back towards so there's a lot of foreshortening happening on this one it's disappearing just off to around about there it's really not going far the second one is a bit more side on so i'm gonna let us get a tube guide in that goes all the way around to about there and then the third finger right next to it being kind of a companion guide finger a slightly tapering tube shape it's gonna be about I have to here. move my and then page i don't know how he draws without moving his open. page a little finger I have to do shape. it. It's going off there, doing its own thing as well. And then again, just kind of turning that into some forms with some shape. I'm using some straight firm lines to hook around the back parts here, just like this, and then just like that, and then to the end, and then just giving it some bump for the underside. And then a very similar thing, as I reach up here, I'm thinking, right, we're going over the center knuckle now. So I might want to get some line there that just indicates that bump and that shape. Remember, it's all going over these knuckle joints and sweeping all the way back in to the base of the hand. And I'm just going to rotate this a bit to make it a bit easier for me. And then okay, he does go sometimes. Think, right, let's go here, get that shape Thank you. There. Thank you and for telling me that you're human. Imagining this line that follows all the way around through everything. Let's get one section, the next, and the final part, and then same up here, but a bit further down. One section, the next, the final part, and then with the little finger as well, just a little something there, here and here. And of course, again, these are the bits that you don't have to worry about. You don't need to separate this out and draw this in, but just thinking about where these areas are gonna be, it's gonna help you decide later on if you want to start bending these fingers or doing anything else of interest as well. So let's just get that joint in there. Let's just erase a little bit of a wrist just up there. And what I'm gonna do now, guys, is now that we've got all these basic building blocks out of the way, I'm just gonna go back around this one, firm up some of the um, silhouettes of this, and just firm up where I've got different edges and curves going on to kind of make these look from building blocks to a bit more like organic hands. And I I'll think I did set. it. Did I do it? Did I survive? I think I got all of their stuff. Ha! Huh. We have basic hand shapes so yeah this was kind of the method where um, they started like with a polygon and then used more angular shapes um, to do a lot of the different hands or maybe if I put this one down here you can see it see all of them together and I found it like super helpful. So that's why I kind of wanted to watch it with you guys um, on our journey, of course. Um, I have the link, but it's uh, Mikey Mega Mega. You can just Google Mikey Mega Mega um, uh, hands and it'll show up. There'll be the one that they had from, I think seven years ago, it said, and then this one from three years ago. Um, both are great. Like I said, I'm pretty sure I watched the um, first hand video a long time ago. <laughs> um, so yeah, do give that one a watch too, if you're interested. Um, but yeah, I think they had some excellent points. Oh, here, we can we can show the final final image. Um, I lost the audio. But yeah, like basically at this point, it's just like, okay, going around, firming up some of the edges like they talked about, adding in some shading and stuff, some little extra lines and stuff, just to make it all uh, look cohesive and done. 
Hey there, guys, and welcome back. Well, there they so, are. Yeah, hopefully this gives you a bit of an idea of how we can start simplifying hands to make them a little bit more approachable for our own illustrations. Mm -hmm. And if it helps you at all, I will be scanning this in and adding it to Fingies. the tutorial reference pack along with all the other Yeah, they have like uh, on their Patreon, on Patreon as well. They have like all their below. tutorial stuff so that let's you can take download. A quick look. As you can see, very cool. we've got the distance between the knuckle and the wrist roughly the same as the distance between the oh, yeah. end so and just the, the review again the longest finger of the hand that's a good bit of measuring for us already and we've broken this down into a roughly pentagonal shape with an extra triangle off the side which gives us this thumb we could certainly sweep right. this more into a curve but just for the sake of keeping things very simple and not like worrying simple. too much about the details simple of the hand, is good I like to work in a lot of quick swift and hopefully confidently appearing gestures and lines to put all of this together. When it comes to the side of a hand, whether it's in a knife edge or just hanging down, we've got the extra muscle area of the thumb and from the side it can just hang out a little bit lower. Remember of course the thumb of your hand can go all the way out and then hook all the way around and in. It's opposable, that's like a big deal for us people. And then when it comes to a splayed open hand, remember to have a little bit of a gap starting to appear between the fingers. Keep referencing your own hands, look at loads of pictures of hands, build up your library, keep doing this as much as And like the back of your hand, like something to mention too, um, the back of your hand, your finger comes um, down more, whereas um, like in here, it comes down, right? And then you have like the webbing that shows in between the, the corner, right? Whereas if you look from the uh, to the palm of your hand, it abruptly kind of stops because that's the top of that webbing. So just like a little detail. Whereas like the other like the other side of this, it would look more like it comes down and has this right. That little web piece. But if you're looking from the palm, it's more like sharp. It's but really yeah, good. that's pretty much it for that one. So I figured now I'll go through and do some practicing and applying this, hopefully, to some pictures um, and references. I'll move that for now. I'll go through and do some drawing of our own. So this is a good warm up. Call it warm up. And now let's apply what we've learned. Yay! Um, so again, I just have like pictures. Oh, one of them had cone cone hands, and you guys have been wanting me to do cone cone hands. Is it this picture? This one kind of has the cone hands. It's not exactly cone hands. Should I take a picture of my own hand? Here, we'll take a picture of my own hand doing cone cone hands and we'll upload it. Cause this is what you could do. You can either search for references online. There's tons of um, pictures that people have got for references and stuff like that. So you can just take one offline. Or if there's a specific hand pose you want, like cone cones, <gasps> cone, cone, pronounce it like that. <laughs> um, then you can just Take one yourself. So I'm gonna do that. And upload it. I'm gonna do a couple. There you go. I got like three. So we can try drawing like three different ones. <gasps> Ad break starting up soon. Thank you, Blaze, for the warning. Keep in mind your volume, ads could be loud. Send these pictures to my Discord. We'll get them uploaded. Mm 
they are uploaded. One. Two. Oh, the other one didn't open. Giant photos. Is one. I did a couple of different angles. Two. Three. Three different cone cone hands. I put a picture of my hand in our resources, thank you. Is it doing a cone cone hand? Now I gotta see. Heck yeah, cone. <laughs> The perfect cone. All right. I'm just gonna make these a little smaller. Here we go. And like, I do this all the time for, especially like if I've got commissions and stuff like that and I have like a certain hand pose that I want, I literally just take a picture of my own hand and then use it as a reference. Absolutely what I just do. apply what we have learned. This is where you actually learn things. So you can watch a video and stuff and learn all about stuff, but, and like you can copy, you know, exactly what they're drawing and stuff like that. But in order to actually learn, you need to apply the lesson to something that is different. Um, so let's choose, like, which one do I want to start with? Which one is going to be the easiest one to start with? Let's do this one in the corner. I think it might be the easiest one to start with. So we're going to do kind of like what they talked about. So first, let's draw a wrist. And then we have the, we're gonna be making that um, pentagon shape that they mentioned. the same length as the palm through the finger. So that first finger is gonna go up like this. And then we're gonna do the same thing where we're gonna give this thickness because we're kind of looking at it from the side. A 
little bit of thickness. And then, yeah, I got a finger here. And finger here. I'm gonna pull them in a little bit. And then we're gonna round out. And make those cylinders, shapes, and also a casual menu. Thank you for the follow and welcome to the Foxfires. Go on, go on. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Welcome into some study time. And this line, I think, is actually uh, this curve is pretty steep. Kind of comes down into the palm a little bit. Something more like that. And then we're gonna do the kind of triangle from the triangle to the or the the meat of the thumb, right? So it's kind of like lifeline that they talked about. Come down the wrist a bit. be a little fatter. A little shorter maybe. So more like that I think. Pretty tricky hand shape. <laughs> but that's okay. It's good practice. Now you guys know what I go through whenever I have to draw cone cone hands. <laughs> it's a struggle.
finger doesn't touch. My cushion and more work with Concord hands for the practice. <laughs> I'm not trying to break these into cylinders. So try to help me. Visualize the angles and relationship a little bit better. Oh, my thumb is too, that's why. I think my thumb is too small. better. Why did I pick this one to do first? <laughs> Question mark, go, go, hands, no! <laughs> Don't do it! I'll do it and even let you pick the OC. No! <laughs> I know you've got plenty of fox ladies to pick from. I'm 
And I got that lifeline they talked about. That's why I'm having troubles. I think that helped a little bit because the the finger is more foreshortened in the shot. Maybe not. I don't know. Just the hands being awkward hands. I think this photo is also awkward because the angle that I took at um, hides the other finger right about here. So it looks like you only have one finger. Only have like eight or so. A mere eight. Gotta get that up to double digits, Natsumi san. We got one rough, one super rough cone. Let's try the other ones. And then I'll go through and we'll clean them up after. Okay, so let's do this one. So we're gonna do that pentagon shape. They talked about make a little shallower. Oh, I'm working on it. Eight is just the cone cones, though. Total is around 50. 50 OCs. Eight fox girls. I'm very impressed. Love to see it. I need to make some more OCs again. It's very fun. Very fun progress to uh, make your own characters. Okay, I'm gonna make that triangle rooftop over my pentagon. So there's gonna be my first cone. And the other cone. Imagine those knuckles. I 
an entire D&D world to just throw them into. So it's a fun little side hobby. That's amazing. I love that so much. We're going to have my third attempt at design for one of my OCs. Ah, amazing. I love it. Right, I'm gonna add that fatty muscle, the thumb, something like that. Oh gosh. Now we have that little thumb cylinder somewhere here. And this thumb is coming out like this, kinda. scooped like that and then this kind of like scoops like this use some lines to guide me Maxi, thank you for the demon general subby for 46 months welcome to the demon army Maxi. get those salutes Salutes for our generals. Thank you. All right, something like that, I believe. Something like that. All right, where do I start? I guess the thumb. So I'm gonna make those. That cylinder. For the bottom and then the thumb. I also have a hitchhiker's thumb, so I probably break the standard look of a thumb because I am very uh, double jointed. a long time to be following the same person I'm starting to feel like a stalker what <laughs> you don't even have the longest subby moxie you can't say that <laughs> you're not allowed to say that <laughs> but thank you I appreciate all the support Try to add these triangles, have them connected.
think these triangles are really, really helpful because they let you see kind of the three dimensionality of the, the finger is a bit. Welcome in, Ishikun. Hello, hello. Hope you're doing well. Another rough sketch. I guess I made my pinky maybe a little too dramatic. again. I do tend to like make my box a little tall I think every single time. All right and then I'm not gonna have enough space. Let me make it a little smaller. There 
There we go. Okay. I think I married Lily without completely breaking everything. Today's a good art day. <laughs> Congratulations. You are now uh, knowing what it's like to become an artist where you do one little thing and then everything breaks. But today is not that day. Same thing, kind of sketching out the finger directions first. I made mine a little bit low, but that's okay. Doesn't need to be perfect. Just needs to have the right feel. Thank you. 
Something felt off. Welcome in, Amira. Hello, Stehan. Welcome, welcome. How are you doing? Doing my best to complete things. What are you working on? Are you studying? It's because this finger points away. struggling with it yes I think so Motions, quick motions. Mm, I did my thumb too low. Ah, Clara with a go, go. Sorry, I missed it there. Enjoy the lurk as well, Hamara. I did my thumb too low.
kind of got the placement of this one all wrong in the first one. But that's a little better. These were definitely some trickier hands. <laughs> some different... I, I said, cone cones are not easy. <laughs> cone cones are like really difficult hands to draw. This is an advanced course. All right, let's try to make another pass on these and clean them up a bit more. When it was to redeem because you already had Konkon on the screen. Oh yes, I got what you meant. I knew what you meant. These hands are struggling. Mom pup get a wahoo wahoo
My hand is too fat. A little better. I don't know why, I always like to start also like when I draw my fingers from the top and then work back. I don't know if that'll be helpful for anybody else, but I do tend to do it that way. Finding it a difficult one way, try doing it the other way. Who knows what could happen? I usually, like, when I draw my fingers, I usually start at the top joint and then work back to the hand. I don't know why. It just always feels more natural that way for me. Quack quack! Rubber ducky! Congrats on the rubber ducky.
to show stretching feels better if you roar like a dinosaur. Roar. Does feel better. <laughs> roar. Mmm. And hydrations. Thank you, thank you. I needed that. Sometimes you get super tunnel visioned in the art. Study. bad. And then the awkward angle one. <laughs> the bad angle one we have. Let's see if we can make it not too bad.
Happy Job! And thank you for the sub for 54 months. Welcome to the Demon Army. Thank you, thank you. Got got with the ads. Is that your first ad in like four years? <laughs> Heavy sarcasm. It was dripping, don't worry. I felt it. I know what I did wrong with this. It's 
my shape. This is too small. I was having so much struggle earlier. Peach was one of the first, if not the first, of the demon army. I don't think the first. I don't think the first but probably close to. a very difficult comb comb practice. But hey, next time I do cone hands, I'll probably be better. Thumb, it looks like when you take uh, tape and shrink wrap and wrap it so the top looks larger with a skinny body, if that makes sense. I know exactly what you're talking about, Blaze. I know exactly. I got the, the mental image, you, like you got the like, and then it's got like the shrink wrap, like a corset. <laughs> the shrink wrap. <laughs> it's got like the a thumb corset. Right? A voluptuous corset. <laughs> Drawing the sands reminds me of how Rob Layfield, one of the creators of Deadpool, would go out of his way to never draw feet. Yup. Recently saw the Deadpool and Wolverine movie, and at one point, um, they're fighting in front of a shoe store called Layfield's Only Feet. <laughs> That's funny. Amazing. Amazing little nod. I love it when they, they do stuff like that in a movie. Add a little nod to the creator, you know? I know, like, um, the creator of um, My Hero Academia, um, they love drawing hands and I was like that makes sense to create a character like Shigaraki uh, in My Hero Academia. You you have to love drawing hands to make that original character. I, I don't know an artist out there 
that would design that kind of character. They, they are actually insane. I don't know how. <laughs> they have to draw, every time you draw Shigaraki in a manga panel, you have to draw, I think it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is it seven hands? Or is it nine? I don't remember. But I'm like, oh my God, that, that, I don't wish that torture on any um, artist, especially not a manga artist. <laughs> I think their like little character is also like a hand, I think too, I don't remember. All right, I tried to do some cone cone hands they're very rough. Why? Oh, rasterizes. They are very rough, but they're hands. Oh, here I can also add just like, just to finish them up, let's add a little bit of shading. Just a little bit of shading. just help give us some form and shape. Helps make it feel a little bit 3D. Shadow. Do the same lighting source. figure out. 
trying to look at my reference, but it's not helping me much. Think that makes sense? succeeded. Thank you. I'm a little, a little self-conscious of my cone cones. <laughs> They're not too bad, I guess. Cone cone hands are just, they're really complicated <laughs> because of the bent knuckles and perspectives. Guys are very supportive of me. I appreciate it. I need all the support I can get. Helps to be not unclear when you're drawing. Yes, not too bad. 
Wow, all those artist struggles I've heard from you, they've never been so <laughs> real. <laughs> I've been respect respectfully staring at Lily's uh, cheeks now. My butt cheeks! I'm staring at my butt cheeks. For the last few hours trying to make it work. Weight painting is uh, not treating you well, I take it. We did three cone cone hands, just like that. It's a little smaller. I'm gonna move this one up a little bit. just so they all fit on the page. Ta-da! They're not perfect, but there is you can go guns. <laughs> we did it! They look pretty cool shaded. The shading definitely helps you um, It'll visualize uh, the 3D space more, for sure. It does bring them to life, doesn't it? Yeah. It helps you see the, like, um, the three-dimensionality of it, right? Because like, I think that's, like, one of the hard parts, too, with um, hands is showing the um, distance like in the in the the palm of your hand, right? That cupping area. And I think once you add some shadowing to that, it helps show that um, curvature and depth in the hand a little bit better. So, yeah. Um, what time is it? Eight twenty. Uh, Blaze, did you have critique that you want me to look at? I'll save this. Not as good as these days. But not bad. I had, I had better luck this day, I think. It's still not bad. For how complicated um, the hand shape is, I'd say it's not too bad. Cause it's really, really hard. Once you get into like closed um, knuckles, things can get pretty tricky. Um, and then like when you're on top of like not making quite a fist, but doing the like the, the cone part, it gets really tricky. I got hands um, done today, all put together. I just need a minute or two to finish one, if that's all right. Yeah, yeah, totally. Actually, what I'm gonna end up doing then, um, I'm just gonna run. I didn't get to have dinner today. So I'm gonna run and quickly make myself a sandwich and then come back. And then I can critique while I eat my sandwich. Sound like a plan? All right, I'm gonna save this. And BRB, real quick. Sandwich time. Critique the sandwich or the art? Well, I mean, I could critique my sandwich. Wait, rocks, rocks, you're on the rocks. <laughs> Can you see rocks on the corner there? <laughs> How did you make it over there? <laughs> you're not at the box. All right, let me go. Get, let me go grab my sandwich.
With a sandwich. Delicious sandwich. Croissant sandwich. Alright. Got it posted perfect. Let me check. Alright. Ta da! I'm gonna eat some sandwich. Hello, Nicholas. Welcome in. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Also, you should come. Can't remember if I come going, but come, come. <laughs> Hello, Paprika. How's it going, Lily? Doing good. How's it going for you? How's the art been? All right. Blaze. This is at Blaze Eater. Eight, eight, seven. Okay. Your forms and shapes are pretty good. Nice work on this uh, fist too. That was like bonus. You even got like the part here that like covers up the um, the finger. That's really well done. Right in there. Love that. Um, I would say for this one, remember your length here. So these fingers are a little bit small. So like the length here needs to be the same as the length here. So if I do that, we come to about here. But it's good. You got that swoop in there. So those would actually go to about there. And then you'd have something like that, right? So yeah, that's the one thing there. Your thumb. Where 
are we missing here? I think it just needs to be a little bit wider. Like that. Doing great, so it's been lovely watching you learn art. I thank you. I'm glad it's a uh, hopefully helping you do your own uh, art journey inspiration. You know, we can all suffer together. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and then uh, remember the thing we mentioned about the knuckle being at the same point um, as the the joint. So it looks like you have your joint here. Oh, that should be back. A little bit, actually. There we go. Somewhere there. Maybe I did a little high, but that's okay. So I think your thumb just needs to be a little bit wider. like that so that's all your fingers were just a little bit short for those guys same with this one too the second one same thing so the distance from there to there needs to equal so they're just a little bit short getting closer. Mm -hmm. Your thumbs aren't that far off though. Like this one is, this one's really good. I think just this part could be a little bit wider. And this part could be a little wider too. I don't remember, what's the shape he usually uses for the... Where's my warm-up sketch from earlier? Yeah, it is kind of like just like a diamond, I guess, kind of shape. But like... Not that bad. Pretty close here. Closer than um, closer than the fingers. Your your thumb's not too too far off. I think it's just making. I think maybe the fingers being small is also making like the um, thumb feel a little bit awkward. And then for this one, so yeah, you still have this base shape. So your fingers again, should be to be out here. So they're close. And then I'd say remember they did all the fingers, so your first finger, I think, might be a little bit too wide. Maybe. 
here. Because you remember, you're still having all the fingers come back to this point. So there's one, two. This one's going to be really close behind. And when I do these, um, I'm trying to keep in mind that curve right here. Here, I'm, I'll do it in a different color. I'm trying to keep in mind that those joints are gonna end up being on the same line, right? But as a curve. So like this one is gonna be lower than this one, right? And then the other one's gonna be lower because this is your middle finger here, right? And then that one's gonna be even lower somewhere there, right? To make that curve of the first joint. And then if my this one is here, this one should be up higher and then back lower and lower again, right? To make a second joint. And then pinky finger. You're gonna see the most of. So again, there's that joint. And then the second joint and then back into your hand. And then this square is, remember, the back of the hand. Or not the back, the palm, right? So it connects back up. Um, so that's kind of like when I'm drawing those fingers, those second set of fingers back, I'm trying to keep in mind where the ending point is and how it lines up to the other ones. Um, and then for your thumb, I think, yeah, you just missed. So the knuckle is here. So that um, middle knuckle should line up somewhere there. And there's that diamond shape. And then the high point of that thumb. Actually, it might be a little bit small. Something like that. So again, um, I think just watching that thumb knuckle lining up will help you um, get a better proportion and then your thumb, I mean, I think this is the one that you talked about where it was like shrink wrapped, right? Um, so it's just a matter of it being um, not fat enough, which is fine. Um, and that's where like getting those um, base shapes down first and having them like, uh, like these squares and stuff, right? These initial steps, taking the time um, there and really making sure that the proportions are set up right uh, before you getting to kind of lining and stuff like that is really important. So it's kind of hard for me to see. Like this one is really good because I can see all your construction lines on it, right? Even this one I can see the construction lines on. Um, I like seeing those. So definitely keep them. Um, just change the opacity layer just down a little bit and then draw your final lines on another layer on top of it, right? And then that'll help to see your uh, sketch underneath more and how you constructed it. And this one's really good. This one's really good too. I think on your I think this 
triangle, you could have pulled back just a little bit and made it not quite as tall because you're really getting like a very big bump here. Um, and then, yeah, these would be like your middle finger lines. And again, your um, palm and your length. So the finger actually comes out to there. So really keep in mind, this is your palm shape, 50-50. Your middle finger should actually come out to about there. And that's gonna help make your fingers not look quite as um, squished, right? And I'd say don't be afraid to really, really stretch that angle there too. And if you need help do, you can always draw light guides for those knuckles as well. But yeah, I think that's the, the biggest takeaway is just make sure um, your palm um, length is equal to middle finger length. Yeah, right? Palm length is equal to middle finger length. I think that's your biggest takeaway. And then, um, I think practicing finding this, the meat of the thumb will help you all out a lot as well. Practicing that shape and that muscle mass um, will be a big one too. Mm. Hydrate! What about a non break? <laughs> You're doing good. Again, this one. Just make that triangle a little wider and that'll help you out. But, but like, see like this, this size, this last segment you did was really good. It was just, I think, bringing out this bump a little bit. And you're pretty good. And maybe this one could have been over a little bit more. You kind of had the middle, right down the middle of the palm. It is a little bit off center. Um, this point, this highest point, a little bit off center from the middle. This was a little close but that didn't really affect your fingers too much. And then, yeah, don't be afraid to really pull these fingers in too. but that's okay, you get the idea. They're gonna answer work on commissions, no worries. Good luck with your commissions, Paprika. <laughs> Snack hasn't been as an option. Snack. Um, nom, nom, nom. I can also stretch. But yeah, you're doing good, Blaze. Hands are hard. Hands are real tricky. Here, I will, uh... Oh, I, uh, hold on. My canvas is crooked. Straighten that out a bit.
It's still crooked. Why is it still crooked? The picture's gonna be crooked. I'm sure you'll get the idea. There you go. Put the critique picture in the Discord for you, Blaze. Hopefully I helped. Like I said, the biggest thing I think is just that palm length and the finger length. That's the, the main struggle I think I'm seeing for most of these. And then your thumb can just be a little bit thicker. And then watching that knuckle lines up with the, um, the knuckle and the last joint, the distal joint um, line lines up. But yeah. I think you're doing A-OK, -okay, Blaze. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Keep your structure lines. Like, even me. You'll see. Right? It's very faint. But I don't delete those um, lines underneath. Like, even if they're wrong. Right? I just keep them. And I just have it very, very light. Like, right here, right? Like, that's not where that's supposed to be. I realized I my mistake while I was lining, and I just corrected it, right? Or, like, here, I came out too far, so I decided to pull the thumb back a little bit and stuff. Like, when you go to draw your second um, pass, um, it's not just about, like, outlining what you've done previously. It's about um, refining the shape that you had previously. And it's good to keep your old lines and see where you had things. A sketch is a sketch. And it's meant to stay rough. Don't be ashamed of those lines. Embrace the lines. Is what I say. Even like here too, like I realized in my head that this line was too small. Like when I'm refining it more, I was like, oh, that's way too small. And I didn't, I didn't draw but I figured it out in my brain. But you could when like, uh, you could like when you realize like, oh, this isn't the right size. I could have also just made another like layer and then like re-sketched it. The right. size, right? I <laughs> give my lines the tough love of being forgotten sometimes. Don't forget them. You gotta remember where you started. <laughs> But yeah, I could like basically make another layer like this with a shape and then drop that down again and then go and do my lines over top again. My second pass. Like these are still like sketch lines. They don't need to be like finished, inked, finalized, um, beautiful line arted pieces. We're just doing, we're doing sketching and learning so. They're free to be messy and not perfect. It's better to stay loose and free. I'm not too stiff. Mm -hmm. Oh, sandwich is so good. Thank you for the critique, seeing the corrections of the work helps a lot. 
good, good, good. I'm glad it helps. Because that's like the, the thing too, is like I find in order to improve in art too, you have to like be able to see your mistakes and stuff like that. And you might think like, ah, oh, I don't like my work or I'm ashamed of my work. Being ashamed of your work is a good thing because it means you're learning and it means that you can see that there is something wrong with your work. That is a good thing, especially when you're learning because uh, if you can see that something is wrong, then it means you can fix it for next time. And it can be really difficult to figure out how to do that on your own. So having another set of eyes to look at it and critique for you is very helpful. This is why we get mentors. <clears throat> mentors are very helpful. Alright, I finished my sandwich. So we'll probably leave it there. This was a, um, a quicker lesson today, but it was kind of just like a, um, oh no, I hit the wrong button. I was trying to snooze the ad and I hit run ad. No! <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> I was trying to hit the other one. Brain. My brain went poo poo. Um, but um, yeah, it was a little bit shorter lesson today because we're just kind of continuing on and doing extra study and help um, compared to the um, last lesson. Because I feel like, like I said, there's only one lesson on hands that Isham does in their Colossal course. And I feel like hands are just so important to art. We do not want to be hiding our hands behind our bodies, okay? It, it's not good. It's better to draw a poorly drawn hand than hide it, okay? <laughs> and, and if you are like, I'm not confident in my hands, do one hand in the picture, like if you're drawing a, a drawing um, some art, do one hand in the picture and then hide the other. You could do that, but at least you try for one because guess what, when it comes to hands, it's just about putting in the work and putting in the hours and doing them over and over again. So even if you're, if you're not like confident, just draw one, okay? Just put one in. <laughs> do, do, a, do a try. But Lily, we have pockets, no pockets. <laughs> no hands in the pockets, okay? Nobody puts their hands in their pockets, okay? Pockets are a lie. Pockets, everybody's pockets are filled with phones. So, yeah, no pockets. <laughs> Hiding hands? Will you feel nothing? No, no. <laughs> cool people do? No, the cool people, they put like one finger in the pocket. They put like their thumbs in the pockets and let the hand hang out. Yeah, that's right. Didn't see that coming, did you? Boom. Um, what was I going to say though? Uh, I lost my train of thought. We got hands here. I guess um, for the um, rest of the lesson, definitely just keep practicing those hands, finding different um, positions and uh, just keep practicing them over and over and over again and try not to dwell too much on um, the end shape. Put more of your time into those um, beginning um, framework steps for sure because those are what's gonna give you the um, nicer hand result at the end. Um, so yeah, really, really focus on that first locking out that really, it's rough, loose, uh, but it's very important. So really try to focus on um, how they relate to each other, I would say. It's kind of like what I'm end up doing when I'm doing these. I'm looking at, you know, the shapes 
here, right? And if this helps you first, do this first. Like if you're having um, struggles just looking at the image on its own, because we work in digital, right? If you're having difficulties just like looking at this and then drawing, draw on top of it first. Like do a trace and find those blocks, right? Find them first. You know? Um, and then take some time to draw out that shape, right? Like when I did these, I just kind of did it in my head. But if you're having difficulties um, seeing it in your head, draw it out on um, top first, on top of your picture. Draw those base building blocks here and then just um, replicate them on the other side, you know? That'll help you immensely. And again, you could do the blind method too um, here where you draw it once, draw it again, and just do focus on one hand pose, one simple hand pose just to get the hang of it. Like with um, something like just a basic hand, like we had with I mean, these are all more complicated, but I mean, you can just do a simple hand too, like a, there you go, like like one of one of these hands, something like that, you know, just a just a palm, you know, something super simple. Um, start there and just do the blind method where you just keep drawing the same palm over and over and over again and just go for speed, you know? And eventually your hand's gonna start um, remembering uh, muscle memory, kind of like the feel of how to do fingers and stuff like that. But that's also a huge one. Instead of focusing, I'm focusing on more, I guess, drawing different hand shapes and different poses um, because I, in my art career, I've drawn a lot of hands, right? I've done a lot of portraits with hands and stuff like that, um, but I wanna get better at drawing different cool or action um, poses and stuff like that. So that's why I'm doing like a bunch of different angles and um, scenarios and stuff for the hands because um, that's just more where I know that I need my practice, right? Rather than um, practicing doing the joints and stuff like that, right? I mean, I need practice there too, and I'll still get it by doing the mileage, but um, if you need that more of that practice and um, setting up those base shapes and their relations to each other, work on that first. <laughs> We're dudes, our pockets are large enough to fit more than one figure. No! I can't. I have I have women pockets. They don't even hold my phone. <laughs> they don't even hold a phone. They hold half of a phone and then the other half of the phone sticks out. <laughs> um But yeah, uh, I think that will be it. Like I said, shorter today. Um, but yeah, keep up the hand practice and then um, next Tuesday we'll work on feet, feet practice. I don't think I have ever done foot drawing practice because a lot of the times I don't end up drawing feet. I usually focus on like bust up portraits and stuff. I, I don't often draw a full body. <laughs> So feet will be something totally new for me and I'm actually kind of excited, you know, in the same way that I was really excited to do the hand practice too because I know my hands suffer. So I was uh, happy to work on these today and that's kind of why I wanted another week of it because I was like, I could practice more hands. You could always practice hands. I know, feet study session. I'm excited for it. Twitch is gonna ban us. <laughs> Twitch is gonna ban us when we're just trying to study feet. We're trying to do the art thing. Don't ban Twitch, don't ban. I promise, it's wholesome. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, next Tuesday, the lesson will be on feet. Um, and then, yeah, 
Uh, I don't know how many more. I think we're getting close to the end of this section as well. Let me just do a double check. Yes. Oh, actually, after this lesson, we are halfway through um, the chapter three, which is on the body. Um, so next week would be feet. And then we have clothing and natural poses. So I don't know what is in store for those lessons. Um, but yeah, we're actually close to finishing up chapter three for the Colossal course. Also blaze with a gong, gong, and a nya nya. Nya nya, nya 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 nya, purse. Um, as for rest of streams this week, um, we have trying to close that. Um, Thursday stream and Sunday stream. I might do a baking stream on Thursday. I'm kind of feeling the baking stream. I thought about we could make um, the cookie recipe from Stardew Valley was kind of uh, one thing that I thought about, but I also have a ton of egg whites to get rid of. So I was like, maybe we should make something with egg. Oh, <gasps> lemon meringue pies. Ooh, I could make some more tart shells and then we could make up just some like lemon cream or something to go in there with like a, with a meringue on top. I don't know, or meringue cookies. I don't know, we'll see. But I, I'm kind of thinking we might do a baking stream on um, Thursday. I'm kind of feeling the Thursday baking stream. We'll see. We'll see. If I end up being too tired, then we'll play a game of some sort. Because sometimes I, I'm like, it is six o'clock at night and I'm done. I'm checked out. <laughs> so we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, but that should be everything for this week. I want to hear myself. Let's go raid Con Con. Yeah. We'll give Con Con some love. Are they drawing Carrie? I just see them drawing a dog. I wonder if they're drawing Carrie. Um. But yes, uh, there is my socials there and uh, my Discord there. Again, with the art channel, um, we do have all the videos up on my VOD channel. Uh, you can see it here. Um, so if you want to go back and see any of the other lessons that we have done, you can check them out all there. Um, and yeah, I think that's everything. Go follow socials, do all these things, click the buttons. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you so much again, Foxfires, for hanging out. Let's get a raid. Command up for Con Con. And Weeb Wednesday is Dungeon Meshi. Yes, tomorrow is Weeb Wednesday. We watch anime in the Discord. Um, so if you want to join in, we're on episodes uh, four, five, and six. So you're only three episodes behind. It's a great time to just still get caught up and join us for Dungeon Meshi or Delicious Dungeon. It is very silly and very good. Um, there is our raid message. Or if you do not have my emotes, there's also those little Foxfire message one that you can also use. Tajibashi, it's so good. It's so good. I really enjoy it so far. Um, I think that's everything. Thank you again for joining me for art study time. We got some good hours in. And I'll see you next time, Fox Fires. I hope you have a good morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time zone it is for you. I hope it's a good one. And if you are off the bed, then sweet dreams. Otherwise, let's go give Kankan some Foxfire loving. Bye bye.